Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to segment three for the Rifter number nine and a half. The, the, this Rifter so far has had the answers to so many problems in, in Rifts and uh, um, MDC Palladium in general. Now we're, we're, we're not going to solving the main problems of the game. We're now creating a, a higher uh, a baseline for uh, happiness that your characters can achieve in the game. We're going to look at some artifacts, some, some, uh, some uh, magical artifacts and new magical spells that you can use to uh, increase the quality of life of your characters in the game. Let's go ahead and get into it. First things first, if you like Heathen Dogs coverage of the Rifters and anything else, Palladium books or not Palladium books, these overviews, please like, subscribe, and share. And I want everybody to remember that right now on the Palladium website, at the, we're in October of 2024, the Palladium books, 2024 Palladium books so Christmas surprise pack, or I'm sorry, Xmas, it's Futurama, a surprise package giveaway uh, is up and running. So $60 plus shipping you pay for, and you get $100 or more worth of books. You get a little, you fill a little list if you want and say, or no, you fill a list with 10, 20, 30 books that you want, and uh, you'll get hopefully something on that list. I always have. You should yeah. too. All right. This is Crazy Akalos Discount Alchemy Summer Catalog. Now, this is made primarily for palladium fantasy but just like all palladium games they are interchangeable so mm -hmm. you can use it in any one of your palladium style games let's go on uh come one come all to the greatest showcase of magical items in the western empire here at crazy akaloth discount alchemy we offer you only the finest exotic items of majory and mayhem uh i mean mystery Please feel free to browse your wares and ask us if you have any questions what form of payment do you accept we'll gladly accept cash anything else yeah, I nearly forgot. We also accept cash. <laughs> what about refunds? Do you give those? No, we don't give refunds unless the customers who possess the power to destroy the building. Then we give refunds. But we do require a receipt. How do you get a receipt? Ask the shopkeeper. Okay, we don't need to go through all that, you know. Is he a gnome? Mer merchant mumbo jumbo. We're going right to the nitty gritty. Number one on the list. The best seller. <laughs> the runic bikini armor. Let's read this. At last, ladies, we have found the perfect garment for your adventuring wardrobe. This dainty little two-piece armor set is perfect for almost any occasion. Be it one-on-one -on -one combat with fire-breathing dragons, the damsel in stress look is yesteryear, rescuing entire villages from pillaging hordes of ogres, apocalyptic battles, and legion with legions of undead, or just hanging out with the boys at a local grinning goblin which is a, probably a local watering hole in your area the high cut bikini line will show off your fantastically muscled and well-shaped legs like never before and the bust boosting wonder brazier not wonder bra that's trademarked top will lift and sculpt your heaving bosom keeping things eat tight even in your most active moments not only will the runic bikini armor make you look good but the artful Artfully crafted runic decorations will provide magics to keep you safe in combat, helping prevent those unsightly scars, which we are all trying hard to avoid. Here we go. Armor rating of 18 applies to the entire body, just well, like magic. the armor of Ithan. Yeah. It's magic. Exactly right. It's runic bikini, not a regular bikini. It's not just metal in certain places. No, it's magic in all the places. SDC of 150. Excellent, wow. excellent protection in Palladium. And remember, you go to a mega damage area, guess what? It becomes mega damage. And there is a humana humana factor. Oh, this is your female privilege. Exactly. It's a female privilege. It is uh it is a off factor, basically, of 16. Works like horror factor or off factor. Upon seeing a beautiful woman wearing a runic bikini, the opposite sex must roll to save versus hormone overload base of 16 a failed roll means the opponent cannot attack you for 4d6 hours unless you attack them first but you get first strike and initiative with a 50 percent chance they will attempt to pick you up only applicable to attractive women with a physical beauty of 12 or higher now 12 is not that high people it's barely above average roll for a human for an elf forget about it you put this on you're even slightly attractive. You will now, you will now be 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 uh, uh, become accustomed 
to the highest echelon of female privilege. So that's funny because even ogres can have a 12 if you roll really well. Ah, but the runic armor has a caveat for that. It has oh. a horror factor of 15. Only applies when the bikini is worn by an orc, oh. ogre, troll, or anyone with a physical beauty below six. Okay. So it's like the old cartoon thing where it's like take off the veil and you know it looks really pretty until you take off the veil, then it's got all the snaggle tooths and so forth. Yeah. Exactly. Like, okay. oh Jesus Lord, no. Okay, I got it. Exactly what happens. Exactly right. Special abilities add 50% to charm impress when charming males, minus yeah. 75% when charming women, unless they're lesbian, and then the plus 50 applies. That makes sense. Absolutely makes sense. Magic resist cold, resist heat, and impervious to fire. So you take half damage from cold, half damage from temperature, and completely impervious to fire while wearing the runic bikini armor. Was it cost? 65,000 gold. Plus Wait, 20, you can build that thing up to 250 SDC? Yes. Yes, you can. <laughs> For hey, More money equals less problems. It's true wow. for the world. It's true for runic bikini armor. Yeah, I mean, this again, take your Red Sonia comic, set it down, take your Palladium book, fantasy book, set it down, and tell me how this doesn't unite. It, it, bring, it brings the whole world together. I mean, yeah. it, it's actually, it's, it's beautiful. Now, uh, Max is going to leave, but I'll be right back. Gonna, but yeah, he's going to miss the, the greatest uh, footwear to pair with your runic bikini armor. I will have to watch it on video when it pops later this week or when I watch it on the stream later, but I'll be back in a couple minutes. There you go. Go ahead. These boots were made for fighting. Doesn't it burn your biscuits to finally get that pair of gorgeous high-heeled boots you've been eyeing only to find that they're perfectly worthless in the wilderness or a dungeon? And forget about combat, lady. One misplaced roundhouse kick and you're flat on your back with a twisted ankle. Well, fret no more. We have the answer. These boots were made for fighting. Designed to complement your runic bikini armor, these fantastic thigh-high boots are so much more than they seem. Crafted from the finest leather and fur, these beauties will put a lift in your step not to mention your rear. But not only do they look good, these boots have function too. We've employed some of the craftiest mages this side of the Great Rift to infuse these boots with a plethora of useful magics. Armor rating of four to legs and feet only. Now remember, if you're wearing the runic bikini armor, it doesn't matter. It's, it's up, it supplants the, the boots. It's AR-18. Even though your runic bikini armor provides you with all the protection you need, these do make a perfect accessory. SDC 200. Outstanding. Colors. Everything to match your bikini. Special abilities. Provides the wearer with perfect balance. See, and that's the problem with a lot of thigh-high boots that have stiletto heels. Your balance is off. They're not good for fighting. But magic fixes everything. Why no one fixed this earlier, I have, I do not understand. But hey, you know, better late than never, right? Doubles the wearer's natural speed, adds 1d6 damage to all kick attacks, leaves no footprints, adds 10% to prowl, and reduces the user's weight by 20 pounds. Now, notice it didn't say effective weight. It said actual weight. Yes, it is the ultimate slim, slim fast accessory. Here's the magic. Allows the wearer to cast the following spells at fifth level. Levitation, weightlessness, superhuman speed, and walk the waves. You can walk on water, baby. This for only 75,000 gold. 45,000 gold for the economy version without the magical spells that listed. That's actually a great deal. That is a good deal. I take that deal every day of the week. I, I'm not an aficionado of, of, uh, high heel boots but these are too good to pass up oh, are you still on the shoes or that one with the bikini i just finished the shoes okay and then we have see no for the first two the bikini and the and the boots they're for you to increase your fun and enjoyment of the game this next one is for the person that you don't want to enjoy the game the thumblers now there's a whole legend behind this. How these came about. The very first thumblers. They are 
magical gloves. The, you know, the, the hoity toity high, high class society silk gloves that kind of like go up the forearm that, uh, that women of high society wear. Well, mm-hmm. that's what these are, except if you have a frenemy, which all women do, and you don't want her to succeed to show you up, which all women understand. Give her these as a gift. Before she puts them on, she's going to she's going to examine them. And under any examination, magical, psionic, or otherwise, they will seem like magical, high quality, beautiful, high society gloves. But once she puts them on, the magical curse takes effect. Uh... All of her fingers become thumbs. What? Yes. All of her fingers become thumbs. And she needs a remove curse to get them off. Now, so this is what you give to that the hot cheerleader chick that thinks that she's like, oh, the best. Exactly. Yes. What since a remove curse takes them off, uh, a sufficiently high society woman will have uh, some kind of sorcerer or wizard on retainer. So you want to give this to her right before some kind of high society function, which she will now embarrass herself in because Mm. besides having, you know, 10 thumbs, it also has other drawbacks. And those drawbacks are, oops, excuse me. Sorry. Uh, Where are we? Oh, there we go. Uh, Once done, these gloves will transform the fingers of the wearer into thumbs. Unless the wearer successfully saved versus magic 16 or higher. What other, what other does it do? Uh, the gloves, magical silk fabric changes color to complement any outfit, but that's the extent of their good features. When wearing the gloves, the user is minus eight to strike, parry, dodge, and disarm. They also have an 80% chance of dropping anything they're holding in their hand. And the wearer will be minus 80% on all skills requiring hand-eye coordination. Even things like opening a door or eating a sandwich. You now have to roll for simple things that used to be hand-waved. This makes you an embarrassment at any function. Of course Absolutely. you want tea trumpets. Of course you want to pick the, the wine off the tray. Ugh. You're going to end up spilling it on everyone's dresses, on everyone's suits. You're going to end up spilling it on yourself. You're going to end up fumbling uh, fumbling those those little crumpets up your nose because you missed your mouth. It's all and, and fo- folks are gonna uh, are gonna talk about the combat stuff all the time, right? But you have yeah. to understand a role playing game. You have many, many, many social interaction times where yeah. a good game master utilizes these opportunities. Good players utilize these opportunities to to increase reputation. Well, guess what? This isn't going to allow you to do to have any any positive reputation whatsoever after that first party. It's gonna make it's it's gonna it's gonna you know. Make your life bad. It's but, a lot hey, of gold to curse somebody, though. No, no. But hey, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. You know. Then we have the ugly stick. This is a lesser rune weapon. What does it do? Let's find out. The maker got a of long story is, with it. He has a lot of story. We don't need to worry about the story. The maker of this thing is unknown, but many believe it to be originate from the time of a thousand magics. Others think the mad troll alchemist uh, created it to destroy all. All what? All things beautiful. That's fine. What does it do? It inflicts 46 SDC per hit. For every 10 points of damage the ugly sticks inflicts, the victim loses one point of physical beauty permanently. Whoa! Per- no, no save? save. <laughs> no save. None. Otherwise, the ugly stick has basic runic powers, meaning it's invulnerable, it, it can't be destroyed, and it has you know the, the basic magics that, that come with all rune weapons. It is anarchist alignment. It exists only to make things ugly. Being sentient, the stick particularly enjoys uh, disfiguring titans, elves, gnomes, and nice-looking humans and dwarves. The ugly stick's debeautifying powers have no effect on orcs or characters with a physical beauty of six or less. Because they're already ugly enough. Wow. Yeah. That is more devastating than I think that people would give it credit for. Think yeah. about that. You you have a high p- uh, physical beauty. You've got, you know, obviously the bonuses, charm, intimidate, whatever. But uh, 
or Charm and Press. But just you, you're you're already you know you usually live in high society. Again, he, he Nug uses the term all the time, female privilege, but it's for guys too. You know, good looking guys over six feet tall, six pack abs, and so forth. You look great, but you, can you take off that veil and all of a sudden you're pockmarked, hunched back? Uh, it might not change your your actual combat stats, but you're disgusting, and nobody wants to be around you, halitosis man. Yes. Yes, I mean, uh, this thing will bring your physical beauty down to six, no matter what it is, with enough with enough hits. Every 10 points of damage, you lose one physical beauty permanently. So, hey, you know what? You'd be lucky if you have very little SDC and hit points. That way you won't have to live being yeah, as right? ugly. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, the, it's the whole princess bride to the pain thing. Do you want to live with no arms, no legs, no eyes, no nose, no tongue? but be able to hear everyone vomiting and crying at your presence? No. No, you don't want that. But the ugly stick can make it happen for the strongest of you. Something to think about. It's a good role-playing items. Exactly. Wizard spells. These are scrolls, jewelry, and and, uh, actual spell formulae that you can buy from the alchemist market. The first one is I can't believe this wasn't in the main book. I can't believe it. You're it. I mean, even back so far as Chaos Earth, when magic magic for humans on Earth was brand new, there, there were a bunch of spells that were invented by children. This is based off of a children's game, Tag. Mm-hmm. And when you're it, everyone runs away from you. You have to chase people and touch them. If someone casts your it on someone else, that person is it. Everyone will run from that person. Not wanting them to get touched by the person who's it. Could this be used defensively? Like, I don't want somebody to be near me or attack me or whatever, so you cast your it on me? Yes, it can be used offensively and defensively. Oh, wow. De- defensively, you know, if if uh, you know, you you cast your it on yourself, no one wants to touch you and they actively run away from you. Let's say lots cast of uses for else. that. <laughs> Let's say you cast it on somebody else and you want to use it offensively. You send that person toward the army. The army will part like the Red Sea to not be touched by the person who's it. We need to create a, a hole in their defensive line. Jimmy can just run Jimmy in there. No one will want to touch Jimmy. Create a hole. Then send the army in afterward. It's absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, that's it for that. And then we no, have, we don't bait. have to cover all of them unless, unless the, you know, no, 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 no. This, the, this, this one is, is connected to your it base. Oh, okay. this, is, this is home base. This gives you protection from who's ever it. As long as you're touching the item or place that base has been cast upon, mm-hmm. you no longer fear whoever's it. You know, you don't have to run. Mm-hmm. Then there's banana peel. You can imagine what banana peel does. Then there's the, you know, these spell names remind me of earth on spell names. Yeah. (laughs) Sometimes they were just like, really, you could have named it better than that, but I I mean, they're useful, but yeah, the deviator, the spell, which affects only one person at a time allows the mage to temporarily change the victim's alignment. The mage may specify a new alignment, or if no alignment is specified when it's cast, the victim will behave in the opposite alignment of their current one diametrically opposed alignment or you can just say whatever alignment you want the person to have this is brilliant absolutely brilliant you have a a scrupulous guard on duty no he's not he's an anarchist guard on duty and now he'll more easily take a bribe and be happy about it see the flip side is you got a character in the party that's really annoying you because he's anarchist and he keeps playing practical jokes on the rest of the group. The party's getting annoyed with him or whatever. Boom. Now, you, now you're uh, uh, principled. 
But yeah, I want to play principal character. Your principal, man. It only lasts one minute per level of experience, so it's not a oh, long-term oh, solution. Oh, never mind. It's not a oh. long-term solution. It's a Can you permanent it in any way? Nope. No. But mm. here's, here's why a psionic or magic user would want this spell. Or that or in the case of psionic, someone cast it for him. Is every single mind control spell or psionic ability in this game cannot make you go against your alignment. Kill your wife. Until now. Exactly. Kill your wife. No, that's that's I would I would never kill my wife. I am scrupulous. No, you're not. You're diabolic evil. Kill your wife. Okay. And then you do it. There it is. No, kill your kids. Give me the PPE. Okay. I'll hold him down. That's the answer. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Uh, shout uh, spell cause a victim to shout everything they say without realizing they're speaking at an exaggerated volume. This is uh, for someone who's trying to sneak up on you. Now, this is either five minutes per level of experience for 15 PPE or 200 PPE to make it permanent. <laughs> oh, it's like that uh, Dilbert character. Yes. I am, don't th I am speaking in a normal voice. No, you're not. No, you're not. But you think you are at all times. But really, you're screaming every time you open your mouth. Ears of the bat. This spell gives remarkably acute hearing to the recipient. In effect, turning up the volume on all sounds. Even the no. slightest whisper <laughs> is heard with perfect clarity. I do not combine that with shout. <laughs> no. Of course, loud noises are also amplified, and any sound louder than normal speaking will hurt the recipient's ears. Anything louder than normal speaking voice, the you lose yep. initiative and fight at a minus three to strike, parry, and dodge, and perform skills at half speed and Ooh. minus 20% for the duration of the noise. Those locked in combat will suffer these penalties as well as lose half their actions. This spell is particularly painful when cast in conjunction with shout and during battles. The mage can cancel spell anytime, but if cast upon others to impair them, he is likely not to do so. Yes, this this has a this has a both offensive and defensive effect. For defensive effect, it's much harder to sneak up on someone who has who has hearing that is ten times more sensitive than normal. On the flip side, in a loud environment, making someone's hearing ten times better than normal will create the whole bleeding ears problem. Yep. So it has as many. It is the Swiss Army knife of spells so many uses so many different situations yeah interesting so, yeah that that is uh that is uh uh some of the stuff that is that is at the uh at the and that didn't even that didn't even fall under the whole ludicrous mage thing like that's a whole occ that with its own set of spells right what the the tourist the, the no the ludicrous the yeah, ludicrous yeah, mage yeah, okay. i didn't even touch on that exactly right 100 100 extra spells god damn how it do you not have this book over. It was way too much to go over. You're going to have to buy this book. You're going to have to buy this book. It fixes so many problems with riffs that it's 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 pretty much the only supplement you need after the main book. Yeah. So what what do we have for chat? Uh, Runic Bikini is absolutely canon in his Palladium Fantasy and Riffs campaigns. I can see that. There you go. Because I mean, it's really easy to convert magic to MDC, right? Yep. <clears throat> so, um, excuse me. <laughs> I don't think the runic bikini ought to have a total resistance to cold. Uh, I understand what you're saying, but the uh, the the uh, maker of it decided to have total resistance against fire because that is more damaging to the skin and can decrease your beauty. And you don't want to go below 12 while wearing this armor. You don't. So you don't want any scars. So, you know, he had to make a choice. Went with against fire instead. The ugly stick is no joke. Out of physical beauty 35. Now I'm down to five. I think he meant to say oh, six because six, yeah, six you was yeah. six. You, you can't go below six. But yeah, you know, no, it absolutely right. Yeah. Going from the the most attractive thing in the universe out of physical beauty. Yeah, of, this of is deific like yeah, deific beauty. beauty. And then going down to a six being but friggin ugly that that is enough to make anyone want to end their life anyone anyone 
you can't go from that level of privilege to below normal person and want to continue living. You can't. Then the follow-up to that is, if I ever get ugly stick to six, please just giga damage me. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I was saying. I mean, you just you just hope to not live through it. If you do, you're you're now in hell. And you just want to make the pain stop. And the last one. Cast this hearing of the bat spell on a glitter boy pilot. Oh my goodness. Even all of the hearing protection that's built into glitter boy armor, when that boom gun goes off, you're going to lose your mind. Yeah, or your ear jumps. That's an excellent <laughs> idea. That's thinking right there. Already, already it's changing the game. Yep. Well, that was some good stuff. I really wish we had the time to go through all of this. Yes. Uh, so many people wanted all the different chapters, and there's so much good stuff in this book. Heathen Dog picked the three, you know, the overview, and then the two that uh, that he thought was the most important. I think he picked well. Um, I'm glad I have it. And while, yeah, finding a reason to use an SDC game is a little tougher, eh, at least the, with the items, those items are, are oh, easily items implemented. Are, yeah. yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's all I can say is I don't know why you don't have it now. Uh, you need to go out and get it. Any any final thoughts? Uh, no, I mean, uh, Rifter 9.5 opened my eyes to, to so many problems that Palladium had. I say had because those problems are solved now. I'm going to implement this into my very next game. And uh, and it's it's going to be actually beautiful. This is good. Can we please get nine and a half part two and a half? I like that. That that is a good idea. That is actually a good idea. And I'm gonna give that some serious thought. Yes. All right. Well, look forward to Rifter number 10 or Rifter Nine and a Half, Part Two and a Half, or whatever Heathen Dog decides to cover in the next uh, Palladium book. But what are you covering next week? Well, I'm 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 going to start reading a uh, a a supplement book. From uh, from our our friends in the red room, okay. uh, I I I I did a, a Giallo uh, adventure before from them, mm -hmm. and I have something different now. I haven't started reading it yet, but I have downloaded it, okay. and I'm going to read it over, and I'm going to see if if I can do it, do it justice in just one week of work, because it I'm going to have to read it you know pretty thoroughly. So hopefully it's that. But if not, then I'm I'm probably going to do the the next rifter. Okay, sounds good. So look forward to that—a game from or a supplement from the Red Room, or uh, the next rifter. And I only have graphics up through Rifter Ten, so uh, I this guess I'm gonna have to start 10. making more. There yep. Yeah. So I hope to see you guys in the next episode.